Hello, everyone. Um, I assume you guys can see me and hear me. Unfortunately, I cannot see you guys, but I assume there are many folks there. Um, seems like you guys having a dinner. It's dinner time, I guess. So um, that's that's great. Um, but today I'm gonna talk about um, use of radiation. Uh, usually, you know, we use radiation to treat cancer in dogs and cats and humans, of course. But um, today we, we are talking about, uh, I'm, I'm talking about radiation used to treat non neoplastic disease, which is unusual. And then you, many of you may get surprised to see, to learn what, what kind of disease we can treat with radiation. So thanks for the great, um, um, very kind introduction. And then I'm very, very uh, excited to share my experience with you guys. All right, let's get started. So I don't have any um, disclosure. So the background rationale for use of ionizing radiation to treat non-neoplastic disease, mainly from uh, its anti-inflammatory property, okay? Particularly lymphocytes and the plasma cells are sensitive to, sensitive to the ionizing uh, radiation due to their high tendency to undergo apoptosis. So we will go over some disease types and cases um, I have treated previously uh, here in the United States. So the first disease is feline idiopathic cystitis. This is a st sterile, so non-bacterial or non-infectious, but it is inflammatory and non-infectious cystitis seen in cats and uh, urinary bladder mainly. Uh, in most cases, symptoms uh, disappear in a few days with supportive care, such as analgesics and environmental enrichment. But occasionally, cats need a long-term care or disease can become a chronic issue. Recurrence of clinical signs is not uncommon, and there are even treatment refractory cases. So we recently treated a few cases of this disease with radiation therapy. Right. Um, I wonder if I can show the laser pointer here. Yes, all right, good. So the first case is um, I treated in the US is a Lance, um, this um, beautiful black cat. He's a eight years old male neuter domestic short hair cat. His clinical signs such as polyurea and the strong urea remained even with multimodal treatment approach. We discussed with the owner about the use of radiation to try to improve quality of life. Historically, we have seen a case that developed temporal worsening of clinical signs immediately after radiotherapy and we of course informed the owner of this risk um, because you know the risk is we we feel the risk is this uh, flare up or worsening of clinical sign after radiation is rare but it, the risk is not zero we delivered a single dose radiation and the worsening uh, of the clinical sign didn't happen to him so which is good his signs improved by one week after radiation. Currently, nine months after radiation, and he's doing very well. This port film, this, this uh, radiograph is called port film. This port film was taken when he was treated with radiation. So he, this was taken when he, he was on the treatment table. And this is to verify patient positioning and treatment field. So you can see his anatomy, the you know, vertebral bodies, pelvic bones and femurs, um, his, his abdomen, you see the red line. This is to make sure he, we are including all his uh, urinary bladder here, as well as the uh, urethra portion. All right. Next one. Next case, another, well, another case we treated is Archer a five years old uh, male neuter domestic short hair. He, uh, he also had medical um, treatment refractory cystitis, and we treated him with the same single fraction uh, radiation protocol. It's been like 18 months after radiation therapy, and he's, uh, he's per owner, um, owner just uh, updated us. Uh, he is symptom-free. 
since the radiation dose for his um, for this treatment is very low, uh, we don't have to give as high radiation dose as you know the treating treating the cancer patients. That this patient didn't show or didn't develop any side effect uh, in general. So it's you know very side effect. If there's any side effect, it's a very mild or almost none, which is a good thing. Next disease type is chronic rhinitis uh, caused by uh, lymphocytic and eosinophilic inflammation. This disease is seen in both dogs and cats, uh, in both dogs and cats' nose. Here's a case example. Milton is a 10 years old uh, male neutered Mitzbury dog. He had three times of intranasal biopsy due to chronic nasal signs, such as nasal discharge and sneezing. All biopsy came back as lymphocytic and eosinophilic inflammation, so there's no evidence of cancer. Since medical management such as oral NSAIDs or steroids had failed, we treated him with radiation. This radiation protocol, five daily treatment, uh, had very low risk of severe uh, side effects, and most dogs show temporal, very mild hair loss or skin irritation. So I mentioned temporal, that means it's reversible or it heals in a few weeks after radiation. He's currently eight months after radiation therapy. Per owner, he's doing well, he's doing well and his clinical signs are approximately 30% in severity compared to before radiation therapy. So the owner is very, very happy. Here is to show the dose color wash or radiation dose distribution. As you can see, the red um, color indicates the the prescription radiation dose. You, you know, even though the red looks very high radiation, the actual radiation dose is not that high. But still, you can see it is very conformal. It's you know just targeting the nasal cavity, the skin, and oral mucosa here. As you can see in this sagittal view, oral mucosa and the brain is very well spared. So the radiation dose distribution is very conformal. And then that's kind of why uh, we don't see, that's another reason we don't see uh, side effect. You know, the another reason, as I mentioned, is the radiation dose is already very, very low. But that is the, that low radiation dose is adequate enough or high enough to kill or suppress the inflammation in the nose. The next disease type we discussed today is meningo meningoencephalitis of unknown origin. It's a long name, but we often call MUO in short. This disease has many, uh, many different names such as GME and NME as I li listed here. Probably have, you have seen or heard these names before. Overall, the common finding among those different disease names include accumulation of inflammatory cells within the central nervous system. As you know, the exact cause of the disease is unknown and the medical treatment such as immunosuppre immunosuppressive approach typically fail or if it worked, usually for only for a short period of time. The um, previous reports indicated that radiation therapy may be able to help improve symptoms and the quality of life. Here, as I showed. So cases that received radiation had a longer survival time in one study. So with radiation, the survival time was 30 months versus without radiation was only three months. A different study showed that dogs with focal CNS clinical sign, so focal neurological sign, um, that those dogs did better than dogs with multifocal CNS, um, sorry, um, central nervous system uh, clinical signs. So third, more than 30 months in with the focal sign versus uh, only two months in uh, with the in with in the dogs with multifocal or like a generalized brain symptom. I don't have a case example of this MUO um, radiation therapy, but um, I just don't have the case or photo. But we treated one case and it went, it went well, so I'm I'm sure this this radiation protocol works very well. 
The next disease type is osteoarthritis. One of the uh, one of the cases I treated in the U.S. Maddie, I, sorry, I don't have photo, but I can I will show you videos in the next slides. Maddie is um she has she's a, a seven years old female spade Labrador retriever. She had bilateral elbow osteoarthritis. Her symptoms uh, were worse and more obvious when she walks on the stairs, which I, I will show the video in the next slide, as I, sa as I said. She exhausted all medical management options and we treated her with low dose of radiation, try to alleviate her clinical signs. We informed the owner that this radiation may not cure her symptom, but we are ho with the hope that radiation will improve her quality of life. So let me play the video. I think I have to cancel my laser pointer. All right. So this is before radiation therapy. So her symptom is not that bad when she's working on the flat surface. But as you can as you can see, she's doing this head bobbing, um, walking uh, appearance. As you can see, she's a little obese. All right, so this is before radiation. This is after radiation. We should have taken the video on the same surface, but um, this time, uh, I don't remember why, but it may be raining outside for some reason. We, we took video inside. Wagging tail, she's very happy. Uh, you still see some uh, lameness. That's not that bad, but this is actually way more obvious when she's on the stairs. So this is before radiation therapy. She's very, re uh, she's very reluctant to go stairs. Show me one more time. So very slow on the stairs. And then this video is the same um, three weeks after radiation. So she's, as you know, you heard, good girl, she's very happy, um, less reluctant, more willing to walk upstairs. So we are very happy with this. So as I said earlier, we are not expecting a cure or you know curing this osteoarthritis. We expect that this osteoarthritis will come back at some point. But the good thing about this radiation protocol is since it is a very low dose radiation, we can probably uh, repeat a few times um, if the symptom come back. Of course, if we you know have a longer gap between uh, radiation treatments, um, that'll be safer and then that'll be um, better. Um, but versus like only a few weeks um, between each treatment is, is not very optimistic. And, you know, we on, the radiation only worked a few weeks and we do another radiation may not work as great. So if we have good response, you know, the second radiation treatment is more likely to, to help her further if that makes sense. So, you know, we we didn't treat her twice or three times. We only treated her once because she's been still doing well. But again, we may be able to deliver multiple course of radiation again because this is a very low dose radiation versus, you know, cancer treatment radiation dose very um, quite high. So we sometimes reluctant that we, we don't want to do multi -radi multiple courses of radiation, but this, um, this type of radiation Radiation for osteoarthritis or non-neoplastic disease uh, radiation, we 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 are more willing to or keen to uh, repeat another um, repeat radiation course. All right, the last disease type we briefly discuss is leak granuloma. Um, I don't know if you have seen this leak granuloma very often in Hong Kong, but it's it's very common in the in the U.S. Um, the, possibly because of, you know there are many cases with um, a dermatology issue or skin issues and like allergy. So this is a chronic inflammatory reaction of the body to continuous leaking or stimulation. 
So theoretically, only low to intermediate radiation dose is required to control this benign proliferation of granulomatous cells, like inflammatory cells. And two reports suggested encouraging clinical um, clinical benefit of ionizing radiation. So I don't have case uh, case example here, but previous reports say here. Let me turn off the laser pointer one more time. All right. So uh, some reports, um, those reports indicated that um, uh, clinical response rates of about 60%. Uh, surprisingly, 35% uh, cases cured, and then 24% recurred, unfortunately. Six, um, the, the, the duration between radiation therapy and the recurrence uh, ranged um, between six weeks to almost a year after radiation. So that is a huge variation. So we don't know when that symptom or leak granuloma recurs, but it is encouraging to see 60% of the clinical response and then 35% recurred. cured. This is a great thing. You know, obviously surgery, you know, if that is a happening granuloma happening here, surgery with a good margin is almost impossible because the skin closing or wound closing would be a concern. So, you know, only, even though it's, it's not like a 90% cure, it's only a 35% based on those old papers. You see old papers at 89 and 93, but it is encouraging. So we are happy to try this treatment if, you know, there are cases. All right, so in summary, um, Let's see, uh, there are many non-neoplastic non diseases that radiotherapy may be able to improve clinical signs. Since radiation dose required to control inflammation is thought to be lower than that for malignant neoplasia or cancer, uh, side effects are typically non to mild, which is good. So regarding uh, the best treatment protocol and the more candidate disease for radiotherapy, or more candidate non-neoplastic disease for uh, radiotherapy, further investigation is needed. So it is very, very interesting field using radiation to control or um, uh, treat non-neoplastic disease in, with the radiation. So we you know um, the multiple, it's a it's a win-win story, or win-win-win story for client and the radiation facility, radiation therapy hospital like a Harvest Veterinary Oncology Center, as well as primary care veterinarian like you guys. So, you know, we, we are happy to collaborate uh, with you guys um, more with, you know, to treat those ne neoplastic disease. All right, that's it for today. Uh, um, it was a little short. Um, presentation, but um, since I cannot hear from you guys, but uh, if you have any questions or any uh, concern or any or comment, uh, comment, feel free to email me. Um, I'm happy to collaborate or um, chat with you guys. Thank you. Questions from the guests? So maybe I have a question for Professor Yoshikawa. Uh, yeah. You mentioned about the uh, uh, multiple cost treatment, cost of treatment uh, radiation therapy. Is yeah. there any uh, minimum duration apart from the two causes is needed? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so typically, uh, we don't have, to be very honest, we don't have knowledge or evidence or data showing doing multi multiple course of radiation for non-neoplastic disease, okay, not cancer, non-neoplastic disease, what is the, is longer better? Or if doing, if we do like a, only a few weeks apart because of the uh, symptom record, is it dangerous? Is it unlikely to, um, is the second course unlikely to work? That portion we don't know. In cancer treatment with radiation in dogs and cats, the longer we have gap between one and on the first and second course, the safer for sure because we are treating, we are giving the radiation almost up to the normal tissue tolerance. And if the cancer recurs after the first radiation course, that cancer cells they already learned how to survive or repair the damage from the radiation. So they are more theoretically more resistant to radiation. So 
that's why I don't, I'm not, I don't feel, I don't feel excited to do the second course of radiation. If only, if I can only gain only a few weeks after radiation for the cancer treatment, for example, like let's say four weeks, we did very aggressive radiation to treat like brain tumor, nasal tumor. We gained only four weeks. Tumor is already recurring or regrowing. The second radiation course for the cancer, recurring cancer, probably we can only gain 50% or even shorter duration of what we gained in the first radiation course. So for this in this in this in this example, only two weeks or shorter, because you know the first trial is four weeks. So I don't know if this applies to the radiation for the non-neoplastic disease. Inflammatory cells should be still sensitive to radiation, as I mentioned in the very first slide. If even if you know, even when the uh, even when the um, symptom or inflammation recurs after first radiation course, so this is something we need to try and we need to try and see how it goes. But from side effect standpoint, sorry I keep talking, but side effect standpoint, um, it should be safe to try the second radiation course for non neoplastic disease only a few weeks after radiation. It should be safe. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, is, there, uh, is there questions? I don't know. I don't think you mentioned any um, consideration about the risk of giving high radiation in a young patient with a benign condition. Do you? What do you say to your owner? Because I mean, at Cambridge we have this policy where we will treat, for example, things like this, like osteoarthritis only in old patients. I yeah, never yeah. heard about treating um, idiopathic cystitis can be treated medically with other things, not with radiation, and the risk associated with that in a young patient in the long term. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Thanks for the question. So I didn't uh, mention, uh, thanks for pointing out, um, I didn't mention in the slide, but the radiation for non neoplastic disease, in most cases, this is, uh, we offer this treatment option as a last resort or last, um, you know, after basically after exhausting or using, trying all other non radiation um, approach, non, you know, like a medical management, analgesics, even surgical approach for the, for example, like osteoarthritis those things so radiation would be the last result because you know as i as you said yes radiation for the young patient possibly is uh dangerous because of the late side effect risk as well as you know um the like secondary radiation induced cancer risk as well as you know the evidence we have in terms of the efficacy of the radiation for non neoplastic disease is so lacking so sparse so that's kind of why we don't say radiation. Yes, let's, this is our uh, treatment of choice. We, this is the number one. Not for, this should be the first choice you guys do for non neoplastic disease. That's why we don't say this. But from the late side effects standpoint, like severe uh, non healing uh, late side effects, such as wound, non healing wound, or um, for the uh, cystitis case, for example, like a chronic inflammatory or bowel uh, inflammation, or in the worst case scenario, we are talking about a stricture of the intestine or colon, or even like a perforation causing peritonitis. Those severe late side effect risks is proportional to few factors. One is a radiation dose per treatment, the second one is total radiation dose. How much how much total radiation dose we deliver, as well as the volume volume of the normal tissue in the radiation field. So depending on the technology we use, the Harvest Veterinary Oncology Center has a um, SRT or IMRT technology. So the volume of the normal tissue in the radiation field that receive high radiation dose can be minimized, which is a good thing. And then. The total radiation dose um, would be much lower than um, the cancer treatment protocols because we don't have to give that high radiation, that 
high total radiation dose to control or suppress the inflammation. So those two factors, you know, we, we, we already have lower risk on for the late side effect. And then the last thing is, you know, the, the, the last factor I mentioned is the radiation dose per treatment. This can be higher or this can be as high as radiation protocol for cancer patients. So we always keep in mind, you know, that those risk of severe late side effect, especially when, as you mentioned, you know, if we consider radiation for the young patient, we definitely go over those risks with um, clients. But thank you for pointing out.